What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna look at functions in Dart. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at functions in Dart. But before we get started, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at functions in Dart. And functions are a super important part of any programming, especially if you do functional programming versus class based programming. And they're pretty simple to do in Dart. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Dart videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So we've got our basic Dart starter code. I'm calling it func.dart. And now we just want to create a function. So I'm going to call it my func, right? And then we need parentheses and then brackets. And inside of the brackets, we could do whatever we want to do in this function. So let's just say print hello functions. Very interesting, right? Exclamation part. So that's a function. Now, if we save this, head over to our terminal and run dart func dot dart, nothing happens. And that's because with functions, they only get run if you specifically call them. And we didn't specifically call this function. We just sort of defined it here. So to call a function, you just name it. So my func, and you use your parentheses, and that's it. So now this will call the function. It should print out hello functions onto the screen, and that's that. So let's come back over here, run this guy again. And sure enough, it says hello functions. So here we're printing hello functions. We could just as easily return. Hello functions. Now, if we run this, nothing's going to happen. Run it again, nothing happened. Why? Well, because in this instance here, we're returning this. We're not doing anything with it. So, if we wanted to actually print that, we would have to wrap this entire thing in a print function. Then it would print out what it has returned here, which is that text. So, now if we head back over here, we can say hello functions. Likewise, we could make this into a variable. So, we could say var, I don't know, thing and set it equal to my func, right? Again, same thing. If we ran this again, nothing's going to happen because we've just assigned it to this variable. We didn't actually do anything with it. So if we wanted to do something, we could, for instance, print out thing. If we did that and ran it, then now it's going to print out hello functions again. So just your basic function stuff. Now, there's all kinds of different things we could do with functions here. We're just sort of this is a very boring function. It just says, you know, hello functions, right? So instead, we could create some variables and pass those things into it. So let's say we want to create a string. And we're going to call it name. Now inside of here, instead of saying hello functions, we could say hello name. Now down here, when we call our function, we have to pass in a name, right? And since this is a string, this has to be a string. So now this We'll pass in the string John into our function. It will assign it to this variable name. And then inside of this function, we can use that variable in any way that we want. So now if we save this and run it, it's going to say hello, John. Very cool, right? Basic functionality for a function. All right, that was a terrible joke. So, you know, we could pass more than one thing. If we also want to pass in Bill, now we have to create two things up here. So let's call this name one and name two. And here, we could pass in name one. If we save this and run it, nothing really is going to change because you see it says hello, John, because in our function here, we only use name one. We could also say and name two. Now, when we do this, it's going to say hello, John and Bill. And that's cool. Now, if we leave off something when we pass this stuff originally into our function, for instance, if we leave off Bill, we're going to get an error because our function is expecting two positional arguments. And we're only passing one. So keep that in mind. Now there are ways around this. You can use optional positional parameters. And to do that, you use brackets. You just wrap your thing in a bracket. So now if we save this, there isn't a name two, but name two is optional. So our function will assign null to name two. So if we run this now, it's gonna say hello John and null, right? So hello John and null. That's kind of cool. That's what's called a positional parameter because this is the second position, I guess, you could create a named parameter as well, right? To do that, we use curly brackets. But now when we call our function, we need to sort of take this variable into account. So we need to account for it and say, hey, for name two, use bill, right? 
So this will add this to that, and this should print out hello, John and Bill. Hello, John and Bill. But likewise, if we don't pass anything, if we don't pass a bill in, if we save this and run it, let's clear the screen, it again says hello, John and null. So that's cool, it's not great, you don't want these nulls floating around necessarily, unless you wanna do logic inside your function, then you could test to see if there's a null. If there is a null, act a certain way, if there's not, act a different way. So you could do that, or you could just create defaults. So to use a default, we come up here, and right here, when we're defining our function, we could say name, and the default we'll say is friends, right? So now we haven't passed in a name to, so it will give name to the value of friends. So now if we save this and run it, it'll say hello, John and friends, right? So that's cool. But then down here, if we, you know, did the same thing as we did earlier and said, hey, have name to Bill, it will ignore the default and it will assign whatever you've told it to assign into name to. So if we save this and run it, it should say hello, John and Bill, and sure enough, it does. And there we go. So those are functions in a very quick nutshell, very easy with Dart, as in most programming languages. Functions are usually a little easier to wrap your brain around than like classes and objects and things. That's why most programmers are functional programmers like this, and not as many class and object-oriented programmers out there, because this is just super easy and it does everything you would want it to do. So those are functions with Dart, pretty simple, and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Conobi.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.